This is section 1.2, linear equations and rational equations. And rational equations are just fractional equations, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So let's go ahead and start example 1, solving a linear equation. And linear just means um, a line, and we'll talk about that when we get to um, the next chapter. But they want you to solve and check 4x plus 5 equals 29. We're going to we're gonna go ahead and try to get x alone, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to recopy this problem now. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I get 4x plus 5 equals 29. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And I end up getting 4x equals 24 because this will add to 0. And I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get x equals 6. That should be reviewed from your last math class. Um, or when you text in here, they should have texted from that. And so now to check this, we are going to go ahead and plug in um, x equals 6 into here. So 4x plus 5 equals 29 is our equation. We're going to put in 6 for x. And we have to see whether that equals 29. Because if it does, then it's the correct um, solution. So I get 24 plus 5, does that equals 29, and it does. 24 plus 5 is 29, so that is the correct solution. Example 2, they want you to solve the linear equation, and this linear equation has parentheses in them. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the distributive property to go ahead and clear those parentheses out. The distributive property is multiplication over addition and subtraction. We'll clear that out. So now we have 2x minus 6. We we'll drop down to minus 17 equals 13 minus 3x minus 6. Okay. On the left hand side, there are like terms right here and here. So we'll go ahead and combine those. So I have um, 2x minus 23, that's equal to, and then on the right hand side I have like terms also, and those terms are the 13 and the minus 6, so I now have 7 minus 3x on the left hand side. Okay. So now my goal is to get x on one side, notice how this last equation, x was only on the left hand side and that was it. You can get x on whatever side you want. Most people like to get it on the left hand side, but you don't have to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and recopy this equation. And I'm going to go ahead and add 3x to both sides. Because that will get rid of this right here. Okay. The left hand side now I have 5x minus 23 equals 7. And I'm going to add um, 23 to both sides to get rid of this minus 23. And you can just go ahead and add 23 to both sides and not rewrite the whole problem. Then I'll have 5x equals 30. Divide both sides by 5. And I get x equals 6 again. So when I check this, always check your solution into the original equation, whatever the lab. Don't check it into here or here or here because if you made a mistake, it won't really catch a mistake. Okay. So when I go back to the original equation, I have 2 parentheses 6 minus 3. Minus 17, does that equal 13 minus, ooh, I ran out of room, let me write that again. Okay, I write smaller, I guess. <laughs> so here I have 2 parentheses 6 minus 3 minus 17, does that equal 13 minus 3 parentheses 6 plus 2. Okay. Now you can actually type this in your calculator. If you have a TI uh, 30 x 2 you can type all that in your calculator, all that in your calculator. If I'll do, but you can go ahead and either do it by hand or just type in your calculator. I get, I'm going to do it my calculator. And later on, these become very involved, and so using the calculator might be easier. I get negative 11 on this side. Then on this side, I get negative 11 also. So it looks like both sides are equal to one another. That means this is correct. Go ahead, on your own, go ahead and do the next problem. So go ahead and pause the video and I uh, will check, um, you can check your answer with mine. Okay, so I hope you paused the video and did this problem on your own. And you can check your work against mine. I get the solution x equals 5. And when I checked it into the original problem, this is the work I show. 
Then I use my calculator to um, verify that one thigh was 45 and the other thigh was 45. So I have a true statement. That means this solution x equals 5 is correct. Okay? Let's go to example three. Example three is a layer equation, but it involves fractions. So now we're talking about a rational equation. And I tell students that when you have a fractional equation, your goal is to get the equation to look like the last example or the example before that. You basically want to clear the fractions. To clear fractions, you want to multiply both sides of equation, I abbreviate equation as EQN, by the lowest common denominator. So if you look at the denominator 4 and 3, and this one has a denominator of 1, the lowest common denominator is 12. So the LCD is what we call lowest common denominator, and that's going to be 12. So what you're going to do is you take this side of the equation, you're going to multiply it by 12. So this side of the equation gets multiplied by 12. You have to multiply this side of the equation by 12 also. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the distributive property. You take 12 times this, 12 times that. And this, this step here is very important to write out. I tell my students to write this step out because it's the one that will cause students to make a mistake if they skip this step. So I'm picking 12 times this first fraction here. So I have 12 times x plus 2 over 4. And then I have 12 times the second fraction. So I have the minus sign 12 times that second fraction. That's equal to 12 times 2, which is 24, but I'll go ahead and write the next step. If you multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, in the next step, all the fractions should go away. 12 and 4 have uh, 4 in common, and when I divide 4 into both of those, I get 3. 12 and 3 both have 3 in common. When I divide 3 into both 12 and 3, I get 4 and 1. And this is the way the step, this is the step where the fractions get cleared out. Notice how the denominator here is 1 and 1, and down here the denominator is going to be 1 also. So I have 3 times x plus 2 minus 4 times x minus 1 equals 24. Okay, and now this is an equation that looks just like the last example. So I have 6x plus 6 minus 4x plus 4 equals 24. On this side, I'm going to go ahead and add like terms. I have 2x, and these are like terms, plus 10 equals 24. Track 10 from both sides. I get 2x equals 14. Divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 7. And now you can go ahead and check that into the original equation, which will be right up. Here. And when I do that, I get 7 plus 2 over 4 minus 7 minus 1 over 3. Does that equal 2? So I get 9, 4, I'm using, I'm doing this by hand, minus 6 over 3 equals 12, or 2, I mean. And I get, um, so notice that is, I'm going to get common denominator, which is 12 times 3 times 3. I get 27 over 12 minus. 24 for 12, does that equal 2? And my answer's not right, so let's go ahead and why is my answer not right? Um, let's go back to here. Oh, I'm glad I made a mistake. I'm making a mistake in my video. This does not work out. I get 3 over 12 equals 2. The problem is I, that, that that's not true. So I'm going to go, and this is a great example, and I'm glad I made a mistake. So I know my answer's not right. 7 is not right. And I'm looking back at my work and I see where my mistake, mistake is. It looks like right here, when I did the distributive property here, 3 times x is not 6x. So that's great. I made a mistake, so I'm going to go ahead and fix my mistake. And I would never have known I made a mistake if I hadn't checked my solution. So let's go back up to here. And hopefully, you caught, if you caught my mistake while watching this video, great. If you didn't and you went along with me, you can still... Um, find your mistake like I just did. So this is going to be 3x plus 6 minus 4x plus 4 equals 24. So I get negative 1x. These two combined together give me negative 1x. And this gives me 10. So plus 10 equals 24. Subtract 10 from both sides. 
So I get negative 1x equals 14. Divide by negative 1 on both sides, I get x equals negative 14. Let's check this. Hopefully this one works. If not, I'll have to redo this whole video. <laughs> so I'm going to check negative 14 into this equation in black. So now I have negative 14 plus 2 over 4 minus negative 14 minus 1 over 3. Did that equal 2? Negative 12 over 4 minus 15 over negative 15 over 3. That equal 2. Gives me negative 3 minus uh, this is ne negative 5. That equal 2. This gives me negative 3 plus 5, and that's 2. That means I know this answer is correct. I did this by hand. Um, you can also use your, your um, TI 30X2S cal uh, calculator, and you can type in fractions into the calculator, and I'll show you guys that um, maybe in another example. Okay, so I'm again I made a mistake in that original problem. I started it the first time, and luckily um, I caught that mistake when I did my check. The check wasn't working out, and so I saw my mistake, fixed it, and I checked it again. Okay. So if you have time on your exam, definitely check it because um, you could have made that simple mistake like I did. Okay. Go ahead and try this next problem on your own. You might need to go ahead and pause the video and then check your answer against mine. And really you want to check your answer by plugging in your solution into the general equation. Okay, so I went ahead and worked out the problem and I multiplied both sides by 28 and I distributed the 28 to each fraction on this side of the equation. And so I got this step here. And I solved for x, and I got x equal to 1. Now this is a great one to check. This is the last example, I caught my mistake. <coughs> if I check my answer, I check my solution. Then I have 1 minus 3 over 4 equals. 5 over 14 minus 1 plus 5 over 7 would be negative 2 over 4. That equal 5 over 14 minus 6 over 7. And so you can use your calculator. And when you use the calculator to check this, um, we type this in. You would type in 5. And there's an ABC button, and that button, um, let me go ahead and pull it out, the calculator, is um, in the second column, third one down. You type in 5 ABC7, or ABC14, minus 6, and then the ABC button again, 7. Let me go ahead and do that real quick. So 5 ABC 14 minus 6 ABC 7. And I get negative 1 half on this side. And then that same thing is negative 2 fourths. That is true. So this is the correct answer. Okay. Um, the ABC button again is in the second column, uh, third one down. So let's go ahead and start the next problem. I don't know if I get done with it before my time runs out. I'm going to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator. And actually, before we start this problem, um, I am going to go ahead and talk about restrictions. You need to state restrictions. So need to state restrictions when they're is a variable in the denominator. So in this case, we have a variable in the denominator. We have actually the same variable twice. And what you want to do is you want to make sure each denominator does not have a zero value. So what would make this denominator zero is if x were zero. So x cannot be zero. And if I have zero for x here, two times zero is zero. So we can't have x being zero in this case also. Okay. Well, it looks like my time is going to run out because I have a 15-minute window for um, each video. So I'll go ahead and in the next part, I will go ahead and finish solving this equation.